So it's not often that I will say something is like my favorite or best. Haven't been excited about a camera in quite a while, but this one definitely changed things. This one is the Reolink Elite Wi-Fi Floodlight. Now, if you've seen their cameras before, you probably recognize this little guy here. It's like their Argus 4 Pro that was in the battery cameras, but then they've mixed and matched it with their Wi-Fi floodlights. And it's pretty damn awesome. And why is it awesome? Well, let's just jump right to it. Of course, if you want to jump to all the little different chapters down below and skip all the random talking or whatever, there's going to be a ton of little clips and everything, of course, and I'll leave the links down below so where you can get your camera. Now, with that said, Real Link did send this for review, but of course, as always, there was no additional funds exchanged. We definitely keep it unbiased as always. So right out the gate, what does this work with? I'm going to say just about everything. It kind of fits both crowds. You just want to throw this up as a floodlight and get it to work and be on Wi-Fi and use it in their app on Android, iOS, etc. Go right ahead. And if you want to throw it in their real link in VR, go right ahead. Throw it in with Frigate. Throw it in with Home Assistant because, yes, this is local control all with Home Assistant. Check this out. Pull in the floodlight. You can turn the floodlight on and off. You can get all the events, whether like an animal, person, etc., all through local control with Home Assistant. And then, of course, if you want to do everything with Frigate, their NVR. The other thing I did not have a good experience with was Blue Iris. It kept dropping on me, but probably a lot of people don't use Blue Iris after they've changed over to other things. But then with Blue Iris, I probably would switch to other cameras. Um, then Real Link, but that's a, a whole nother deal. Don't forget, you always get the warm tip. So this is the new Elite. And yeah, it's not as big as I've seen before and some of the other like big Amcrest, you know, models and stuff. And I think even I've done one with the Eufy. There was a Eufy floodlight that had like a PTZ that was weird and stayed only in RTSP when there was motion. So hopefully that won't be like this. I highly doubt it is. So they've taken this same like deal in their Elite series and just added it to the floodlight. So yeah, let's do the honors. If I can find the tab. So this is designed to like say mount on a wall and then you know you can pivot these arms for the lights you can put the camera you can flip it upside down it seems very versatile on what you can mount it to i'm going to be mounting mine under an eve and we'll see how that works one thing i did want to see is how it mounts this is a new work box where they like you know mount this you know hammered into the studs but it should be the same lineup on the actual you know screw holes and stuff so kind of curious to see how that is we'll see what's in there in the box maybe we should have a mount bracket or something 
Um, so this, of course, is 120 volts for the U.S. market. So it's going to run off of mains. Got a wrench. Um, USB, I'm, I think that's for, for to commission it must be. I've seen that with doorbells and stuff like that. So this should be... I'm curious. Aha! It does fit. So I really like to see where your real link is listening to the customers. Like, hey, I would need a floodlight camera that works off of Wi-Fi. And no, you won't get PoE with this because by code, well, I guess you can mix it in some instances, but for more normal stuff, you can't mix low voltage and high voltage in the same box. So that would make it hard to weatherproof, especially on a wall. So I get the whole thing. This is more for like if someone is has a floodlight on the corner of their house and then you just replace it. That it stays on all the time. And then this will be able to trigger based on like person, animal, vehicle, etc and just trigger the floodlights there it's like a smart floodlight plus you get the camera and it looks like they kept even the same camera because it has the leds now i don't know if this model is infrared so we'll see how that works out um it does say the ac input is 26 watts so definitely LEDs, so a lot less than what you've seen you know, on some old school stuff. So what's all on the back? I'm curious. Because I'm about to go install this and replace a Eufy floodlight. So, oh, that's neat. So they did build in a little level that's right there for you, kind of like a throwback to the old Nest. Um, sorry, so some people with the generation of the Nest stuff. But... Especially for the wall mounts, you can toss that in. And then they even gave a plug for if you're going to put the wire through, make it bootleg. But um, I'm going to, like I said, mount mine under the eave. And then you get, of course, here, you get your line, your ground, and your neutral. So it is 4K, 180 degree camera and does have two floodlights. This is going to work off of mains power. This is not going to be PoE. They do have a PoE model, but that's a whole different deal. That's that duo PoE with the other lights if you want to look at that one. This one is meant to where, hey, I've got a floodlight on the corner of the house and we leave it on all the time, right? You got a dust to dawn sensor on it because you're too lazy to turn it off and on every night. This camera is perfect for that. I would put this at my mom's house. We had the same deal. I wish this would have been out when I did her real link cameras. It would have been able to cover the entire backyard with just one camera instead of having to do like two. Now there is a infrared LEDs on this as well as the, you know, full on floodlights. It again, it is Wi-Fi, but it does support Wi-Fi six and it does support, don't get your numbers confused, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, and actually you can set it to prefer which band. Pretty damn slick. Now the sensors here, they're 1 slash 2.7, eh, it's okay, but you do get those full 8 megapixels for each lens, so it comes out, looks like 5, 120 by 1552. Crazy little resolution because again, it's like two lenses jammed together in one stream. Now, does the full 180, I've already probably showed the links and clips of different things as I rambled, the floodlights, the other cool part is you can move them from warm white to cool white or something in between, and they are 19 watts. Don't confuse that with a 100 watt versus because that's incandescent to LEDs. So kind of look at lumens. This is a 3000 lumen floodlight. Pretty damn bright, lights up the whole side of my house without any issue. Now I will say the mount is probably better for a wall, but I didn't have a wall mount with 120 volts mains AC. Um, I'm sure they're gonna be supporting the other mains in other countries for 220 or 240 or whatever it may be, but it should cover everybody. The wall is the better solution for this because under my Eve, it just, wasted some of the camera because of where the eve was at 
But other than that, it will work fine for that type of installation. I was able to move the lights around and everything to get a good view and get a good flood of the driveway and everything. So this is the PC version of the Reolink app. There is a web GUI. You can go do things that way if you'd like to. Tons of different options on the camera. I do really appreciate that Real Link is sticking to allowing local control. So yes, you could block this from the internet if you're really nervous about cameras and everything, which is understandable. This is the Real Link app. There is tons of different features and everything in it. You can turn the lights on and off. You can, you know, blare the siren, et cetera, because it does have a speaker. It does have two-way audio. And of course, you can change the, you know, like whether you want it low quality or whatever. Now, the cool part is, is down to the floodlights. I had an old Eufy up here and it seemed to trigger on every damn car that passed my driveway and quite a bit do pass. And yeah, they got annoying as hell. Yeah, I let it go on way too long. I tried fixing it, but this one does fix it because check this out. You can go ahead and change the light and go to a floodlight. And then you can tell it, hey, I want night smart mode and I only want it to trigger, turn the floodlights on when there's a person. I don't want it to trigger when there's an animal. Um, I don't want it to trigger when there's a vehicle. Now, you, of course, you can turn that on, etc. cetera. And of course, you can change the brightness. It works pretty damn slick. Of course, they do have all the other stuff in here for like turning on like the motion mark, the sensitivity, the object size. You can say, hey, I don't wanna do a detection of someone in certain areas. Like I grayed out all of this, my neighbors throwing parties and stuff triggers too much. Um, and, but it is pretty damn slick. All the things you normally see in the real link stuff, you can change the frame rate and they're getting a little better on this for some applications but it needs a little work, but it's better than nothing. Now there is a spot for a micro SD card on this camera. I did not put it actually in the camera. I didn't need it. I was actually gonna record it with Frigate and actually with the Reolink NVR. Of course, you can see that here in the playback. This would work the same if you just used a micro SD card in there. And this is just cause it's just the storage on the camera itself. Hey, I wanna see people. I can filter this down and I can jump over here and see all the wonderful people that were doing work today. And you can just go ahead and zoom in and see OG doing his stuff over there and helping me out putting some rocks and gravel stuff we had to do in the yard. Now from here, you can, behind me, you can download all the various clips. You could do that with the phone app, et cetera. I'm not gonna go through all of that crazy stuff and bore you, but it is pretty damn slick. The Real Link app, I really enjoy that because I can give it to somebody else and just say, here, here's the camera, go ahead and work it. And they don't normally have to call me and ask me a bunch of questions. Now it does have, you'll see here, you can, it's gonna turn on the actual floodlight cause it saw the person walking there. So it does actually have those red, you know, you can kind of see them for seeing the night vision for doing the LEDs. And then once it detects a person, it will turn on the actual floods. And of course that's all depending on the settings that you have. Now I did mention this does work with Frigate. If you're not familiar with Frigate is just an open source software in VR with like package detections, person detection, et cetera. It does work fine. I passed it in through GoToR2C, just like they want to, and you do get all the various events recordings. It is that wide screen of H.265 for the mainstream, but it seems to work fine. You can see some of the same clips I did show in the actual real link NV hardware in VR. This is just using Frigate. OG's oh, uh, doing his thing and unloading the uh, gravel that we had in the back of the car. So um, definitely can't uh, complain. He's doing, helping us out there and unloading things. I actually should probably see, make sure he didn't scratch the car, right? But he's pretty good at that. Pick that bag up, OG. There you go. That's some jujitsu skills helping him out, right? <laughs> With them strong arms. Now, of course, I alluded to earlier with Home Assistant, you just add it to your network, it pops right into Real Link. 
the integration in Home Assistant. You're going to have to put your ID and password. You could make another user, et cetera. But you do get all the various like motion things. Like you want to do some different events with automations and everything. You can get all of that through right here. There's no having to do this with like YAML stuff or whatever. I just put in the ID and password. It picked it up automatically. And you do get all the, the yeah. See, I was talking about it earlier, all the cars that pass my house. So yeah, I, I couldn't do anything with vehicles on actually turning the floodlight on. Now, of course, if it was somewhere different, whatever. You get all the other switches and firmware notifications and everything. You want to turn on all this stuff on and off. The volume, you do get everything. It even shows the current state of things. You could see it was in black and white, and apparently it was in color. Probably whenever there was a person walking by, it would turn into color mode. I'm not sure what you would do with this mode, but rather interesting that you do get that event. And of course, you do get the also you can pull in the actual camera itself. And as I mentioned before, there is a web GUI on the actual camera. This is just using Chrome. It's going to take and smash it. You'll get some of the same stuff if you really want to dig through here. And then you can do the playback if you didn't want to have the app or whatever. I'm not going to go deep into all this, but pretty cool that real link still includes that. Now, you do need to go enable that. So I guess I should show you exactly where that's at if you want to enable things. I'm doing this in the real link PC app. You can, I think you can do it in the phone app as well. But you need to go to network and then go to advanced and then look under, I think it's server settings. Under server settings, you'll have all the different things to turn off and on. I turned on HTTP and I turned on RTSP and on VIF. That way I could use them with Frigate, Blue Iris, and actually Home Assistant, etc. Now I did mention I did try it with Blue Iris. I kept getting just, it would disconnect and connect and connect and disconnect. I've never really had good luck with real link cameras inside of Blue Iris. Maybe if I ran it through GoTo R2C, it would probably clean things up and we could we wouldn't have that issue because it runs great in Frigate. It should be the same in Blue Iris. It's just that weird codec issue of real links, but GoTo R2C fix that fixes that. Now if you want to go through all this and you don't know and you need some help with things, of course, you can look down below. There's a DigiBlur DIY Discord. We'll definitely help you out with all your different frigate, go-to R2C, etc. things. So that leads us to would you buy one? Hell yeah, absolutely. I wish this camera was out when I did several different other real link installations. So many people that I ran into you have a floodlight situation, but they just leave it on all the time for the backyard, front yard, etc. I could throw these in, pop them in, they get Wi-Fi from the house, call it a day, pull it into their Real Link app in VR and be done with it. I'm really happy to see Real Link jump into this realm because it's not always feasible to run an Ethernet cable to some situations, but yet then they have power and a box and the whole nine yards. Now, the only thing I found negative on the camera was I wish I could have tightened up the actual mount on it. It started to kind of sag a little bit and has like a little space. Not sure what they can do to fix that, but that was about the only thing I could really say with the camera itself. It may be that it's too wide of a fisheye look on for doing under the eaves, but then it'd be great for the wall, so I get it. I, it was absolutely great for what I was doing it with. It covered everything in the driveway, the whole side, you can see it is pure 180. Now I've had to zoom in and out to kind of show you some of the quality here in this video, but absolutely it is a great little, you know, floodlight Wi-Fi camera that does Wi-Fi 6 as well as the five gigahertz side. It was pretty awesome to see. Now, of course, you'll find all the links down below for the, where you get your camera. And I do appreciate and thank Real Link for sending this camera. And that'll about do it for this one. Y'all press all them buttons and y'all take care.